Welcome to Maths Companion. I am Damesh. Have you studied what we have discussed in the last video? In the last video, we have learned how to draw a triangle having the same area of a pentagon. There were two homeworks. Let us check the answers. The first problem, draw a regular pentagon and then a triangle of the same area. Calculate the area. First of all, let us draw a regular pentagon. Here, the measurement of the sides is not given. So, you can take any measurement. Here, I am going to draw a regular pentagon of side 5 cm. So, first of all, let me draw a line of length 5 cm. Now, take 108 degree at one end and draw a line of length 5 cm. We know each angle of a regular pentagon is 108 degree. Now, again take 108 degree at the other end and once again draw a line of length 5 cm. Once again take 108 degree at the other end and draw a line of length 5 cm. Again you can take 108 degree and draw a line of length 5 cm. So this is a regular pentagon of side 5 cm. You can draw it in another way also. First of all you can draw this line. Then taking 108 degree you can draw this line. Then taking 108 degree at the other end you can draw this line. Now you can use your compass. Take 5 cm in the compass and put at this end and draw an arc. Then put the compass at this end and taking 5 cm in the compass, draw an arc again. The point of intersection is the next vertex. Join that to this end and to this end. We will get the regular pentagon. Anyway, we have drawn our regular pentagon. Now we need to draw a triangle having the same area of this regular pentagon. For that, we need to divide this pentagon into triangles. Let us draw diagonals to make the pentagon into triangles. Now we have to draw triangles having the same area of these two triangles to form a large triangle. For that, we need to draw a line parallel to this line and through this vertex. You know how to draw a line parallel to a given line. For that, we can use our C square and ruler. Place the C square like this and place the ruler like this. Now, move the C square to this vertex. Now, draw a line. This line is parallel to this line. Now, extend the base of the second triangle, that is this line, to meet this line. Now, join these two points to get the triangle. These two triangles have same area as they have same base and the third vertices are on a line parallel to the base. Similarly, we have to draw a triangle having the same area of this triangle. Place the ruler and C square like this. Move the C square to the third vertex. Draw a line. Now extend this line to meet this line. Join these two points to get the triangle. These two triangles have the same area as they have same base and the third vertices are on a line parallel to the base. Now look at this large triangle. The area of this triangle is equal to the area of this regular pentagon. Now we have to find the area of this regular pentagon. For that it is enough to find the area of this triangle. To find the area of a triangle, we need base and height. Here, this is the base. What is the length of the base? Up to this is 3.1 and this length is 5 cm and this length is 3.1 cm again. So 3.1 plus 3.1 is 6.2 plus 5 is 11.2 cm. So the base is 11.2 cm. Now what is height? It is the perpendicular distance from this vertex to this side. Let us draw it and measure it. It is approximately 7.7 cm. Now we can find the area. Area is half into bh. 
here b is 11.2 and h is 7.7 .7. so we can write it as half into 11.2 into 7.7 .7. half into 11.2 is 5.6 so we can write it as 5.6 into 7.7 .7. multiplying we get 43.12 centimeters square that means the area of this regular pentagon or the area of this large triangle is equal to 43.12 cm square. The area depends on the side of the regular pentagon which you take. Here I have taken a regular pentagon of side 5 cm and I have got this area. If you take a different side, you will get a different area. But this is how you have to find the area. Second problem. The picture shows a rectangle divided into two parts. Instead of the broken line separating these parts, draw a straight line to divide the rectangle into two other parts of the same area. Calculate the areas of these parts. Let us take the figure at first. Here the rectangle is divided into two parts using these broken lines. Instead of these two broken lines, we have to draw a straight line like this and the area of the two parts must be same in that figure also. First of all, let me join these two points like this. Now, the first part or this pentagon is divided into a quadrilateral and a triangle. Now, I am going to draw a triangle having the same area of this triangle. For that, let me draw a line parallel to this line and through this point like this. Now join this point to this point. Now this triangle and this yellow triangle have the same area as they have same base and the third vertices are on a line parallel to the base. Therefore area of this yellow part is equal to area of this quadrilateral. Because you know for this pentagon and this quadrilateral this part is same. These two parts are different but they have same area. So you can draw a line like this to make the rectangle into two parts. And we know these two parts have same area and these two parts have same area. Now let us find the area of each part. To find the area let me draw a line like this. Now this pentagon is divided into two trapeziums. Let us find the area of each trapezium and add it together to get the area of this part. How can we find the area of a trapezium? We know the area of a trapezium is half h into a plus b. Where a and b are length of the parallel lines and h is the distance between them. Let us consider this trapezium at first. Here A is 1, B is 3. And what is the distance between them? This total length is 3 and this length is 2. So this length must be 1 because 2 plus 1 is 3. That means this distance is 1 or H is 1. So replacing the values we can write half into 1 into 1 plus 3. Now we know 1 plus 3 is 4 and 4 into 1 is 4. So we can write it as half into 4 and we know half into 4 is 2. So the area of this trapezium is 2 cm square. Now let us find the area of this trapezium. What is h here? h is the distance between these two sides and we know that is 2 cm. a is 3 and b is 2. Replacing the values we can write half into 2 into 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. So we can write half into 2 into 5. Half into 2 is 1. 1 into 5 is 5. So the area of the second trapezium is 5 cm square. Area of this trapezium is 2 and area of this trapezium is 5. So area of this pentagon or this first part is 2 plus 5 or 7 cm square. Now we have to find the area of the second part, that is the area of the green part. Let us find the area of the rectangle at first. What is the area of the rectangle? 
length into breadth. A length is 2 plus 3 or 5 and breadth is 3. So the area of the rectangle is 15 centimeters square. So that is the total area. From that, if you subtract the area of this yellow part, you will get the area of the green part. So area of the second part equal to 15 minus 7 or 8 centimeter square. When a line is drawn from a vertex to its opposite side, the side is divided into two parts. And the triangle is also divided into two parts. Is there any relation between these two lines and the two triangles? Today, let us learn this in the next section, Triangle Division. Look at this picture. A triangle with base 6 cm and height 4 cm is given. Now let us join this vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side like this. Now the triangle is divided into two smaller triangles and of course this opposite side is also divided into two parts. Now what is the area of these two smaller triangles? Both of them have same base or the length of the bases are same. What about the heights? That is also same. So the areas of these two smaller triangles are same. That is the area is half into 3 into 4 or 6 cm square. So when we join this vertex to the midpoint of this triangle, the triangle is divided into two smaller triangles of the same area. Now instead of joining this vertex to the midpoint, let us join it to some other point like this. Here this vertex is joined to this point which divides the opposite side into lines of length 2 cm and 4 cm. Now what is the area of the smaller triangle that is half into 2 into 4 or you can simplify 2 and 2 so you get 4 cm square. Now what is the area of the larger triangle half into 4 into 4. 2 twos are 4 so you will get 4 into 2 or 8 cm square. Now look at the areas. The area of the larger triangle is twice the area of the smaller triangle. And look at the parts of the sides. The length of the larger part is twice the length of the smaller part. Let us use ratio to say this. What is the ratio of the parts of the sides? This is 2 and this is 4. 2 is to 4. 1 into 2 is 2. 2 into 2 is 4. Dividing we will get 1 is to 2. That is ratio of the parts of the side is 1 is to 2. Now what is the ratio of the areas? That is 4 is to 8. Simplifying we will get 1 is to 2. That means this line divides the bottom side into 2 parts and the triangle into 2 parts. The ratio of the parts of the bottom side and ratio of the areas of the triangles are C. Is it always like this? Let us check by taking some other example. Here this line divides the bottom side in the ratio 2 is to 3. What does it mean? If this part is 2, the second part is 3. Can it be 2 and 3? Then the total is 5, but here the total is 6. That means we have to divide 6 in the ratio of 2 is to 3 or make 6 into 5 parts and the length of the 2 parts equal to this length and length of the 3 parts equal to this length. So what is the length of the first part? We have to divide 6 by 5 that is 6 by 5 and we have to take 2 parts 6 by 5 into 2 or we can write 6 into 2 by 5. So this is the length of the shorter side. Now what is the length of the longer side? 6 into 3 by 5 means we have to make 5 parts and we have to take 3 parts. 
Here, I am not going to simplify it, I am keeping it as it is. Now, let us find the area of the smaller triangle. What is the area of the smaller triangle? Half into B into H. Half into B means the side 6, six into 2 by 5 into the height is 4. Now, what is the area of the larger triangle? Half into base into height. Half into base is 6 into 3 by 5 and height is 4. Now, let us find the ratio. Half into 6 into 2 by 5 into 4 is 2. Half into 6 into 3 by 5 into 4. You can see half on both sides. It can be simplified. Now, 6 is also on both sides. It can be simplified. 4 is also on both sides. It can also be simplified. What remains now? 2 by 5 is 2. 3 by 5. And 5 is also common in the denominator. That can also be simplified. What remains then? 2 is to 3. That means the ratio of the areas is 2 is to 3. And what is the ratio of the parts of the sides? That is also 2 is to 3. That means this line divides the bottom side and the area of the triangle in the same ratio. Let us generalize now. Let me take a triangle like this. Let the sides be A and B and let the height be X. Then what is the ratio of the parts of the sides A is to B? What is the area of the smaller triangle? Half into A into X. What is the area of the larger triangle? Half into B into X. Now what is the ratio of the areas of the triangles? Half into A into H is to half into B into H. See, half and H are common. That can be simplified. And we can write A is to B. That is the ratio of the parts of the sides and ratio of the areas are same. That means we can say a line from the vertex of a triangle divides the length of the opposite side and the area of the triangle in the same ratio. We saw that the bisector of a side of a triangle through the opposite vertex makes the triangle into two equal parts. Now what about the bisector of an angle? In what ratio does the bisector of an angle divide the opposite side? Let us see. Here I have drawn a triangle of sides 6 4 and 5 centimeters. Let me draw the bisector of this angle. Let this be the bisector of this angle. Now the triangle is divided into two parts. Let us find the area. One side of the smaller triangle is given. To find the area of the triangle, we need height to these sides. Let me draw the heights. Let this be the heights. Don't these perpendiculars seem to have same length? Let us check. Look at these two triangles. This side is common. And we know these two angles are equal. Because this line is the bisector of the angle. And bisector means the line which divides the angle into two equal parts. So these are equal. Now these are right angles because these two lines are perpendicular. The two angles of this triangle are equal to the two angles of this triangle. So definitely the third angles are also equal. Now what did we see? One side and two angles of this triangle are equal to one side and two angles of the second triangle. So the triangles are equal and therefore their sides are also equal. More clearly, the sides opposite to equal angles are equal. So these are equal angles, opposite to them are the heights. So these are equal. Now we don't know what the length of the heights are. Let me take it as h. You know they are equal. Let us find the ratio of the areas of these two triangles. 
what is the area of this triangle half into 4 into h and what about this triangle half into 5 into h so the ratio is half into 4 into h is to half into 5 into h half into h is common simplifying we can write 4 is to 5 so the area of the triangles is 4 is to 5 now we know one thing that the line from a vertex divide the opposite side and the triangle in the same ratio therefore the ratio of these two parts is also 4 is to 5 that means the bisector of an angle divides the opposite side in the ratio of the sides or we can say in any triangle the bisector of an angle divides the opposite side in the ratio of the sides of the angle we can use this in another way also this is a triangle this point divides this side in the ratio of the other two sides the bisector of this angle passes through this point because we have seen that the bisector of an angle divides the opposite side in the ratio of its sides this is the point which divides this line in the ratio of these two sides so definitely the bisector passes through this point that means when you draw a line joining this point to this vertex that is the bisector of this angle so we can find the bisector in this way take a side find a point which divides that side in the ratio of the other two sides join that point to the opposite vertex that line is the bisector of the angle at the opposite vertex now let us do a problem in the picture below two lines are drawn from the top vertex of a triangle to the bottom side prove that the ratio in which these lines divide the length of the bottom side is equal to the ratio of the areas of the three smaller triangles in the picture let us draw the figure at first now let this length be x and let this length be y and let this length be z and let the height of the triangle be h now what is the area of this blue triangle half into x into h and the area of the yellow triangle is half into y into h and area of the green triangle is half into z into h what is the ratio of the parts of the bottom side x is to y is to z what is the ratio of the areas of smaller triangles half xh is to half yh is to half zh half h is common simplifying we will get x is to y is to z that means the ratio in which these lines divide the bottom side and the ratio of the smaller triangles are equal today we have learned two points a line from the vertex of a triangle divides the length of the opposite side and the area of the triangle in the same ratio and in any triangle the bisector of an angle divides the opposite side in the ratio of the sides of the angle now you have an assignment it's a question from page 20 of your textbook the picture below the top vertex of a triangle is joined to the midpoint of the bottom side of the triangle and then the midpoint of this line is joined to prove that the areas of all four triangles obtained thus are equal to a fourth of the area of the whole triangle hope you have understood study well stay safe have a nice day